Welcome everyone, I'm Machi Kuchara and this is Art Cafe episode 109. In this episode I had a chance to talk with an old friend and the world-class artist John Park. John is a film and video games industry veteran who worked on projects such as Avatar, sequels, Rogue One, Planet of the Apes and much more. Uh, he is also a co-founder of LA-based art school called Brainstorm. We spoke about some of the most interesting topics of current times, which is working remotely and how the world is changing amid COVID-19 outbreak. I hope you're going to enjoy this one. Let's go. starting brainstorm can you imagine that was um damn that was about five years ago five six years five years five years i think yeah. it was five years i would have to check but to my knowledge that's that was the last time we actually had a podcast together yeah and then insane part about that is how freaking fast the time is flying it's yeah. kind of insane damn that's because yeah, it feels like it was yesterday, right? It, it does. I mean, I've been, I've been, you know, seeing a lot of your posts, and so it, it's from the time that you started Learn Squared, um, and some of your other developments, like it, those have been kind of like, uh, I guess, visual, um, I guess, uh, roadmaps for me, just to kind of see like how much has been done. But it does feel like it was, you know, a few months ago. That, that yeah. we last spoke. No, actually, we spoke two years ago. Did yeah, I just noticed. Two, year, two years ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. That's the last one we had. I'm so I don't know. I, I don't even remember what we're talking about. <laughs> I'm, 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 like the, I'm like the worst art friend, dude. <laughs> hey, let's do a podcast. Yeah, man. How was uh, 2025 sound? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, we, we're all busy, right? We all get, you know... I mean, you, 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 you run, you run brainstorm and you have work, you have kid, there's just a lot going on in your life. Yeah. So it's like, it's really hard to expect to like, Hey, can you dedicate your time for me specifically? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's very difficult to carve out time to do that. So yeah. understandable. And, and, you know, yeah, I feel, you know how it works. Yeah. I, um, I mean, it's, 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 it's a pretty poor excuse on my part because yeah, we're all, we're all busy. Um, and I've had to turn down a lot of like workshops and other podcasts, but I think, mm -hmm. I think it's, it's really a lack of effort on my part. Um, if I'm going to be honest, because, you know, in order to make these things work, I have to, you know, I, I can't just use the excuse bar and be like, oh yeah, I have time now. <laughs> I, I think, I think yeah, I, you have to kind of um, be very proactive and, and be like, you know what, I'm going to carve out time, um, and, and try to make this work in a positive way, you know? Well, now you have no excuse because everyone's quarantined. <laughs> I know now, now we have to do like, every week, dude. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> For those who are listening, uh, you know, we're recording this. What is, what is it today? March 27th. So by the time it drops, it might the world might be completely different yeah. because everything kind of changes uh, <laughs> day by day. Um, you know, there was this funny meme I actually saw because it, it relates to like this new stimulus package that is going through the Congress, I think, right now. Oh, right. Um, and it's, it's basically like a, like a, you know, toilet paper roll machine that just cutting the, the papers, paper into roll, like the rolls. <laughs> you know, there's this, this giant roll that just slides in. There is a cutting machine and it's like government printing money. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it was so funny. Dude, I don't, so I, here's the one thing. Um, I, I'm still trying to figure out why toilet paper? I have no idea. I, I, I Unless it's, unless it's like, 
Eastern Euro- like everyone just became Eastern European uh, behind the Iron Curtain, where there was like no toilet paper. Those that those were the times where you wouldn't. It was very difficult to get toilet paper for some reason. Uh, then I would understand, but huh. it, it's like. You know, there is this one machine that you can buy. It, it costs less than two packets of toilet paper, which is called bidet. Yeah. And then you don't care about toilet paper at all. You know? your, your, your ass is cleaner. You Dude, it's because, whistle clean. Yeah, because you're basically taking a little mini shower. Yep. Um, yep. <laughs> and you're, it's probably good for your, your piping system, you know, or anyone who has a septic tank. Um, yeah, and it feels so good. <laughs> It's it's kind of, it's just weird to me, man. Because I'm like, are we just taking more shits during this quarantine? Like, I don't know. Is that why, or or do people think toilet paper companies are gonna stop producing paper? <laughs> like, what the hell, dude? It's kind of crazy. I think, I think it just shows you how how much of stupidity is out there when it, when all of this is happening. Um, how how people just are getting more dumb, basically. <laughs> yeah. It's 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 definitely a panic attack for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can I can tell a lot of people get anxiety for from this, and the, one of the main reasons to me I can tell is the watching news and whatnot. I was well, I, I tried to pay attention to news because like obviously I want to be informed on what's going on and and get an idea what to do and when and whatnot. But when I read like three headlines, like ah, I'm done. <laughs> this is this is just like one giant bullshit <laughs> and then you click the article and it says like read read first one for free and then the next one is five dollars it's like oh they're making a killing right now coming up with stupid shit you know that's insane yeah i'm 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 doing the same thing i'm i'm probably fear-mongering myself like looking at all the uh the live coronavirus updates and you know what you, you need oh, to do shit. What's you up? know what you need to do? Just go on CDC. That's yeah. the only website you need to check. And a local health department. Like that, you're gonna get all the news you need and actual data, not some like weird. I came up with an article and it needs to get clicks. <laughs> so I just make. I'm gonna make it look like like the world is falling apart. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. That's good. It's crazy times. It really crazy is. Times for sure. So the, How, let, let me ask you this, like. Uh, mm-hmm. How do how do you stay uh, motivated and uh, kind of maintain a sense of like, you know, sanity and and just positive momentum during this time? <laughs> All right. So I think there's one common denominator for artists that have kids mm-hmm. that is very difficult <laughs> with kiddos. Yeah. Like right before we started this, you know, I, I had like a long conversation with my daughter, like a long conversation. I'm talking half an hour <laughs> explaining why I have to do the work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, because like, you know, I work from home. I've been working from home for past few years, um, mostly because I chose to be closer to the family and I, I fucking hate commute, man. I hate it. It's just a giant waste of time. Um, so I, I, I've kind of set up my own rules and boundaries of how things are supposed to be. If, if I close the doors to my office, that means I'm not home basically, you know, right. it, it just means like, unless someone's dying, unless you get coronavirus and you cannot breathe anymore, like you're, you are supposed to go to hospital, then, then that's when you can you know, knock to my door. That's basically the rule, you know, or unless the house is on fire or someone is breaking in, you know, like the very, very emergency like situations, anything else, anything else, I'm going to flip, flip out. Like, I'm just going to get mad. You know? <laughs> and I, I, I'm being serious, you know, because like when you go to the office, uh, you, you, there's a certain amount of disruptions you're going to get from your coworkers. Yeah. But the expectations the expectations are you are in the office and you're in a work environment, right? Yep. When you're at home, it's very difficult because it is a home environment and it's very easy to blend between family and work. Oh yeah. And you get distracted all the time and then that kind of prolongs your day. So so now your evenings that you normally would have with family, like let's say you've carved out time for family during the evening time. Now you have to do the work because you haven't done it uh, throughout the day because you were so distracted. Yeah. So it is easily spills <laughs> across the whole day, right? 
it's very difficult um to maintain i would say i think going back to your original question i talk too much dude uh, but going back to your original question I, I i don't read news that's that's one of the main things i kind of like i have my goals I, I i just get informed enough you know i i think they're doing like uh daily press conferences uh with the president talking about you know what they think that it's going on um you can watch that if you want to get an information what's going to happen to the country from a political level if that's interesting to you but all you need to do i mean i'm talking about the us is cdc and and health departments they give you all the information about what's what's legal what's illegal like what are you supposed to do wash hands all that all that stuff right yeah you can see the numbers i think there's a john hopkins website that talks about like it gives you a live update of, of the numbers but honestly i why would you pay attention to numbers at this point i mean you can pay attention to numbers when it, when it's starting to happen and you want to con i mean like contain it i mean it's like no one's going to contain this thing anymore yeah so like paying attention to numbers is you know kind of pointless and when i read about h1n1 uh that was in 2010 mm -hmm. which by the way i mean some people ask like why no one was panicking back there back then i i, I think it's because is that the swine flu yeah the swine flu yeah the outrage or the panic wasn't as as big as as now but i i from what i've read it was like there's 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 certain differences that that that, that make makes it more sane to do it now um but but whether whether you whether you think that way or not that flu hit 1.5 billion people in the first year 1.5 billion from the moment it broke out right and you know how many people this, died this one? half a million so and i i, I was i was like oh okay so we, we kind of had like a coronavirus flu already like 10 years ago and it was kind of even worse to a certain degree All right and it was uh, it wasn't affecting uh old population as much it was actually between 40 and 60 like more healthy population yeah um so when I when I saw that, it's like, oh, okay, like unless we get to like millions uh, in numbers, then maybe I should pay a little more attention, you know. <laughs> but otherwise, just just follow the guides and and you'll be fine. So I don't know. The panic is kind of I don't subscribe to that at all. I've I've spoke with some friends that are like I feel totally down and like, hey, I, I asked them one question: Do you read news? Yes, I do. Oh well, stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah do you feel down dude <laughs> <laughs> but honestly like the, john do you do you feel like any you know i mean there there's a certain amount of anxiety you're gonna get out of this right because of the how how it's on you know unraveling and i, I feel more about the economy honestly that's gonna be bad but I yeah think for your i think for your average your average worker right it's 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 very real because yeah, it's it's really hitting kind of the service sector. It's hitting a lot a lot of you know retailers and people that that don't necessarily have the luxury of working from home. And so um, that it has a real toll on that on that sense. Um, <clears throat> I mean, yeah, like there are other things that cause a lot of death and and uh, you know health issues. But it this is this is a really big disruptor on on all fronts. Yeah. Um, and so I think I think in that regards, it causes this kind of, uh, I mean, for a lot of people, it might be anxiety. Other people might be just like this anxiousness of like not being able to get out. Um, and for other families, it's just like flipping, flipping them upside down, you know, yeah. economically. I mean, I, I was, you know, you and I were talking earlier and, you know, we were just kind of, you know, just talking about like how lucky we are that we are artists and we get to work from home and we still have clients and, uh, you know, we can still interact uh, through online and, you know, still still get work, you know, because we do everything through email and Dropbox and, you know, pics or wh yeah. whatever format you use. Um, but like I have I have a cousin who has a who has a restaurant um, out in like Ontario. And he had to completely shut down, you know, he has like a yeah, it's heartbreaking. Account. It's dude, it's really bad. And it's it's one of those, it's one of those restaurants that do relatively well. Like, you know, he has hundreds of customers that come in. He probably revenues like a couple thousand dollars per day, you know, and now he's making like 
50 bucks, you know, just barely doing two goes and, you know, he just had to close the doors and it's, it's, it's hitting him and his family. So the reality is it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's very scary for a lot of people on all fronts economically, you know, it's scary for older people for, uh, in regards to health, you know, um, I think there's a lot of like younger, younger folks who, uh, probably take this a lot lighter because, you know, we have, we have a stronger immune system. Maybe our bodies can endure it longer. Yeah. It's not everyone, but in most cases. Um, <clears throat> so we, we kind of feel like, you know, we might be invincible at this point, but it's, 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 very, it's a real problem for sure. Yeah. I think economically it's going to hit the, the younger market much more because I mean, if you're most, most older people, they are on, uh, on the retirement, which is sort of like you're kind of covered by the, the amount of money you saved and, yeah. and government help if, if you're young and you, you're in a workforce and you don't have the luxury to work from home, then you're going to be worried because this is not going to be, I mean, from the, the sort of like the writing on the wall is kind of like, it's going to, it's going to not only just the disease going to stay for, for longer might be seasonal until we get the vaccine yeah which may, which we will go away completely and that at that point um but the economic economy economy these jesus christ my, my english <laughs> economy uh is gonna stay bad for a pretty long time you know yeah yeah and i think it's gonna affect everyone even our our market you know right now we don't see much of a change because entertainment industry works in a way in most cases where we kind of work on the projects that are are supposed to be released years from now yeah so it's not like they're gonna stop oh we have to stop we have to stop uh, now because whatever like no they think about profits they're gonna make in 2021 22 you know or even even next year right right um so it's a little different but yeah i don't know like restaurant business is, is particularly difficult because like uh, I was someone was talking about this I was listening to one of the podcasts I can't remember which one but or maybe it was someone saying this uh, a while ago but you might have like a hundred clients or you might have a client that come to your restaurant every day and they love the food and then one time you, you prepare it wrong and they don't like it they stop coming you know? <laughs> yeah so <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's it's a diff it's gonna be difficult times for a lot of businesses. I can totally feel it for for the other workers. But you know, I also look at it this way: the world is kind of fucked uh, in so many places already. Like, if you would think about every single person that that you know is not doing okay, you would lose your mind. Yeah, yeah, that's Cause, true. Because we are kind of privileged to be in you know live in like pretty developed countries most of us um i'm not talking about everyone but you know um there is a certain amount of privilege you have from from being in a country that that has developed systems right oh yeah i mean i so think you have, i think this is going to be it, it's going to be one of the things that where you know, a lot of a lot of you know we talked about earlier too a lot of studios and and companies are going to have to reformat you know, um, yeah, we work. maybe we should talk about that actually, you know, yeah. how it's going to change. Cause you've been, you've been working from home for, for a bit, uh, you know, on and off you have, yeah. you have obviously brainstorm. I'm actually curious to hear about that as well. Um, I've been working from home pretty much most of my time since I left Naughty Dog, mm -hmm. I would say vast majority of my time since I, um, left Naughty Dog. Mm -hmm. So for me, for me, this whole thing is actually no change almost at all, apart from having a toddler 24 yeah. seven. <laughs> um, but I'm curious, like, what, what do you think um, this is going to do for and we should talk about the entertainment industry specifically, Yeah. because like, I don't know how it's going to affect, you know, restaurants and all the other businesses. I just have no information on how those businesses work whatsoever. Right, right. Like, but you know, entertainment, whether it's the illustration, whether it's videos, video games, or films, any of those. You know, what do you think? What do you think is going to happen in coming years? Um, well, I mean, there's definitely going to be a, a big slowdown for live action production, right? Because if they can't right. do sets and shoots, um, then it's yeah, it's it's not it's not going to happen uh, anytime soon. So um, that's that's getting slowed down. Um, but I feel like video games. 
you know, and, and animation and, and any anything that's like more CG or cartoon based is going to continue to go, um, you know, because you can you can actually re- work from remote, um, you know, if you have your 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 system and your pipeline in place. Yeah, so I think I think those will be fine. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, I, just just in regards to um, you know, it's the actual live action part of it. It's I'm I'm really curious. I was talking to a buddy of mine, and uh, you know, he was just worried that it's it's going to dry up, you know, th- this rest of the year. You know, because it, it takes such a long time to ramp back up. You know, because yeah. you have all of these VFX vendors and uh, these other production companies that had to basically lay everyone off or just halt. So all those other people are going to have to go figure out how to make a living. And then when you're ready to ramp back up, you're not just you don't have everyone on standby. Now you have to kind of slowly rebuild that infrastructure, and yeah. that, that takes time, right? So it's not like this. It's not like this perfect V shape where you know we suddenly drop everyone off. And then when we start back up, we ramp on the same incline. It's going to be this st- steady, slower decline. So um, that's going to be a very interesting time. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm just I'm just trying to you know kind of look at you know how I can make adjustments as an artist. You know, um, mm. you know where can I be productive, and and what are some of the things that I should you know where I can actually uh, help. Um, and I think that's going to be in a lot of, uh, you know, video games, um, you know, more, more CG based films or, or animated shows or things like that, or even right. on like longer crew productions. Um, yeah. So that's, that's kind of how I see it. How about, how about for you, man? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I think I agree. Uh, I, I, I guess my question would be how long this whole shutdown of the markets gonna last you know i mean honestly uh, here's how i see it and and this is just a general thing for how long it's gonna take the moment people are gonna riot they're gonna open up everything (laughs) that's that's, that doesn't happen man yeah i i really hope that doesn't but when i hear when when you have politicians saying like you know, this is gonna take months, and we're gonna we're gonna force close everyone. It's like, okay, tell it to a family that that's like has no money, and that's the only thing they can do. This one business that they are working in, and now you cannot pay rent, and now you cannot cannot feed your kids, kids, yeah. especially in the poor poor um, uh, neighborhoods. That's not gonna last for long. Like yeah. people are just gonna go on streets. It's it's uh, yeah, because it's like. You know, when doctors talk about cure for, for things, they always, they always, you know, the, the, the idea is always to do no harm mm-hmm. or whatever cure you're, you're applying, um, is the cure worse than the, the z- disease itself, you know? Right, right. So I, I feel, I feel the society is going to reach a point w- whether we like it or not, that we're not in a utopia, we're going to reach a point where the econo- econo- economy downturn is going to be so difficult to bear with and uh, the amount of misery that comes from it will be too difficult for for governments to keep everything shut and people are just going to have to re- live with reality that you know you might get sick right right um, i mean and that's that's not my personal opinion that that's how it's supposed to be yeah um it's just like i see the reality un- unraveling that way uh, to me, it's like you know. For uh, here's one thing I don't like like to say. Oh yeah, stay home and like just chill. And I mean, okay, I can say stay home, learn. This is opportunity to learn new skills, and it's mostly I'm saying this because it really is. You have no choice. Yeah. And uh, the world is changing because of the whole thing. Um. So if you can develop skills that allows you to allow you to work from home or be in the businesses that allow you to work from home you're going to be so much more so much better betterly prepared for everything else that might happen in the future right yeah yeah but to say like just yeah just hunker down and stay like there's there's some some people like celebrities that talk about this like yeah just yeah just chill at home like just be 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 this and that it's like yeah tell it to family that has no money yeah it's you it's, live in a big house with like no, a ton they, of savings they, like that that's, they're that's living easy in a different for you world for sure they're yeah. living in a different world cuz you know they have they have they have a lot of 
you know, capital cushion. And so it's, yeah, ex you know, it's so them, different when you have capital cu cushion. It's so it, different. Yeah, it totally is. You know, the, the yeah. one thing during this time is like, you know, if you're, if you're, you're used to a certain routine, right? You're used to going to work. You're used to kind of going to studio and I'm purely speaking from an artist's perspective. Mm -hmm. All of this is happening. Like, what do you do now? Like, how do you utilize your time? How do you stay positive? Right. Right. And, um, the one thing that I've been doing is I, I've been trying to create, recreate my own schedule from home. And I know you've, you've been doing this cause you've been working at home, but just treating it like, you know, you're on a, you're on another job, but you're not on, you're not on location. You're at home. You know, you wake up same, you know, same, you know, early morning, get your day started. Um, you know, I try to, I try to spend one to two hours of doing personal work um, and just kind of map out your day where it is productive. Cause if you're just yeah. sitting there, you are literally just slowly dying, you know, and you're worrying yeah. about all this stuff and it's fucking depressing, dude. It's so <laughs> like, it is, it's, it's like such a motivation killer, man. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it is. And I have to say, dude, like for the, like the first, first week, it, it messed me up, dude. Cause I was, I was like, this is doomsday. The world is going to come down, crash. <laughs> Everyone's going to get this virus. We're all going to die. And I was just thinking about like all the zombie movies. I'm like, yeah, it's going to be like that. <laughs> We're like contagion. I'm like, yeah, it's that. It's totally that. Um, which you have to watch by the way, it's fucking insane how exact it is to our current situation. Um, yeah, it's a little different. Cause that was like, killing half of population yeah exactly I've, I've read i've read um no it was one of the i think it was one of the john hopkins uh doctors saying that if if there was a contagion that kills 60 percent of population that would be a species ending um event oh yeah yeah meaning oh. like not only is so many people would die it would actually kill the economy and society to a point where to to a point of no return almost you know wow so Dude. yeah gives you perspective right <laughs> <laughs> yeah but I, I you cannot think about the think about this whole thing that way yeah you know because yeah. like i agree you know first week was 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 rough even for me like i i was like okay i can work from home again you know because i was doing um like past few months i was for this one project, for this one production designer that I love working with, I worked with before. Um, I was like, okay, I'm gonna do commute because it's just like, you know, it's it's a change of pace for once. Yeah. For one, and then also it's like I I really love working with that guy. I I wanted not to miss that opportunity mm -hmm. when he reached out. So I did that, and you know, I, I, I'll be honest. Like mid mid through the project, it was like fucking. Oh, I don't. I, I'm gonna quit. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> the commute it's the commute man like i just you know for some maybe for some people like commuting an hour each way every day is is fine uh -huh. to me it's like i just like look at it from perspective of how much work i could do uh -huh. in the meantime uh -huh. it's like 40 hours a week that's a lot of, like not a week 40 hours a month that's a lot of time wasted <laughs> a lot of time wasted you know yeah well so, I, I i i do commute into la and I live really far, for those of you who probably don't know. Uh, Yikes. I, I live out in uh, San Bernardino County, so... Me going, How long is your commute? Yeah, it's about an hour and 45 to about two hours in the morning. And uh, about the same going back home, you know, depending on, you know, if I if I try to leave after traffic hours. So my right. commute is around, <clears throat> is around like three and a half to four hours every day. Yeah. Um, and so... I mean, do I wish that? It's, no, I, I don't. 20 hours a week. Yeah, it's it's insane. It is 20 hours a week and it's like 80 hours a, a month. But I, I, I found a way to kind of, um, I guess, utilize that time while while driving. Um, I mean, I, I listen to all your all your podcasts. I listen to a lot of audio books. <laughs> um, but I've been I've been actually trying to do <clears throat> a lot of uh, audio um, just kind of like note taking, you know, I, I'll turn on like my, I'll use my phone and just kind of record, uh, you know, certain schedule thoughts or ideas, um, just to kind of have, just to kind of keep myself occupied during that time. Otherwise, you know, I, I'll go crazy. Right. So I'm trying to yeah. flip that <laughs> script in that sense, you know, where, 
you know, like if you are stuck in traffic, how can you be productive while you're sitting in your car? Right. Yeah. So, um, that's been, that's been actually keeping me pretty sane. So, and, uh, yeah, it, it allows for a lot of like my own, my own like thinking time, you know, so that I, I, I don't have to, you know, go to work and interact with other people or, or, you know, be at home and be distracted by, by family or, you know, it's kind of like I can use this time to kind of really think about what it is that I want to achieve and, and other, other concepts and ideas that I want to develop, you know? So, yeah. but now it's changing and now we don't have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Okay. Uh, which, which comes back to your original question, like how, what are you, you know, how, to, how it's all going to change for the industry. I agree, I, I agree with you on the animation side, uh, f live action film. I'm actually curious what's going to happen with live action film, especially because it's going to disrupt, it's already disrupted, uh, the box office to zero basically. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I don't, I don't, I don't par participate that a lot of people want to go to theaters after after all this oh yeah no but you know you know what is going to happen is a uh, is that um and i was honestly just kind of waiting for disney hbo like all of these big productions to kind of start doing home theater releases yeah and they did that for, with um with uh that new pixar movie i think it's called onward uh-huh i think um and they 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 announced it they released it on uh you know on uh, on Disney Plus or or on 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 Amazon, and it was something that I wanted to take my daughter to go watch in theaters, and I was like, "Holy shit, I can watch from home!" And uh, I think you're gonna get you're gonna get the same amount of audience retention. It's gonna be very bad for um, movie theater businesses, you know? Yeah. Because there's a lot of it's service, right? Service based. But I think in terms of actual, um, you know, people digesting and, 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 and consuming content, it's still going to be there because people are at yeah. home. They want to be entertained, you know? And I think, I think as artists, we have a responsibility, man. We have to, um, you know, take advantage of this time and, and, and really give people like an exit, like a, a, some sort of creative exit where they can, they can escape from this reality, you know, the harsh reality and, and start producing and, and kind of, you know, give them some sort of enjoyment, you know, and I think, I think it, it kind of goes back to like all those other, you know, economic bad times that we've had, like the house yeah. crash and like the, the depression and all that stuff, like entertainment did really well, you know? Um, and I think, I think we all need to, um, you know, stay focused, uh, be positive, move forward and, you know, use our skills to help, to help other communities, you know, other, other people, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, how do you think it's, I mean, let's go back to the, the live action film. Cause like animation, we can agree that this is, this is probably the easiest, um, the easiest, uh, market to adapt to. Like all they, all the animation studios really have to do is make, make sure that the VPNs are set up, right. that your workstation at home has proper software, all of those things. And then, you know, I guess the communication part is going to be something that uh, the management that normally used to just walk around the office and do the management that way. Right. Now we'll have to uh, adapt to an online environment to a certain degree because uh, we can participate. Uh, we can uh, anticipate that this is going to last for, for a bit and then eventually uh, people are going to get back to studios. But from the on, on from the new projects that are going to come up. I don't think the the scale of production is going to be as as big in the studio environment as now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I wonder what do you think about you know live action film? How do you how do you how do you think the that's going to adapt? Because you know right now a, a big question would be the travel because a lot of studios you know they do um, films in cities like Atlanta and Vancouver and all all the other places like Louisiana and. London, you know, all all across the world, like production starts in LA and then goes after a couple of months goes somewhere for filming. I wonder if that's going to change and if film's going to be made locally again. I wonder what they're going to do about, you know, the 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 principal photography itself, like how they're going to organize cuz like we, you've been on set, you know how many people are on set, you know. It's insane. <laughs> it's man. it's kind of insane, right? Insane. Yeah. 
so how that's gonna change uh i mean for now it's just i guess impossible to do um but i wonder how it's gonna uh, pan out in the future man and, such a such a good question i honestly um yeah it's it's uh you know going on location is is gonna be i i don't, I don't know I, I don't think that's going to happen, but I think there is a creative solution, and and I know Star Wars Mandalorian that this, um, where they actually created a virtual set, right? Yeah, yeah. I think um, a lot of films are doing this right now. Yeah, I think I think that is going to be the new the new way of working, and honestly, it's it's amazing, you know. Yeah, it's, it's pretty. You get real time lighting, you get real time everything, right? Yeah. And and even scouting on location, you can virtually scout. <laughs> Which is insane. Um, so I think I think that is going to be a game changer for a lot of these, uh, th a lot of the way these productions work. And and I think I think that's kind of where the adaptability comes into play, right? Um, you know, because mm -hmm. of the situation, we can't we can't necessarily uh, a lot of these productions can't necessarily function the, the way they used to back in the '80s, '90s, and 2000s. Now it's kind of like, you know, what if you can't go because of travel restrictions, or you need to have a, a you know, you need to keep it within a hundred hundred man crew. You know, you can't have you can't have four or five hundred people on set. Um, how do you how do you uh, how do you continue to move forward? And I think I think this yeah. this might be an answer. Um, I don't know. I'm I, I don't want to speak on behalf of like how these productions work, but I, I can see that you know as as a as a opportunity from my point of view. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, man. Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> it's 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 interesting. I mean, I mean, for us specifically, illustrators and concept artists, you know, artists in general, it's probably good times, right? Because we can work from home. Yeah. Um, and I, I think it's gonna be much easier from this point on to say to the studio, like, hey, I want to work from home. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think a lot of studios or a lot of productions will have much against that because it used to be that you would have to be really good like really good for them to say like, okay, yeah, I trust you enough. Um, right. so you can do the, you can do it from home or you would have to be far from the location yeah. that the commute wouldn't make any sense. Uh, that, that would be normally when you could say, I, I don't want to work right. uh, in the studio. And it's like, cause, um, one of the benefits of being in the studio environment, and it's pretty clear for everyone who's, who's in the film production right now, is that when you work with production designer, um, you know, the, the ability just to go to his office and say like, hey, whenever you're ready, I have work ready for you. Right. Or they can come over and check the progress. <laughs> That's just faster than scheduling calls. Right, right. But the argument could be made if it's more disruptive for the artistic and design flow. Meaning, if you if may, maybe now we're finally gonna have more time, especially in film, to actually develop ideas instead of rushing concepts to get as many as ideas out there versus the right ideas, you know. That's such a good point. And, and here's the thing: like in terms of disruptions, right? I want to I want to I want to kind of go on that point. When you're at a studio, you get a lot of disruptions, and you know. Yeah. Yeah. You, got, you got coworkers and you're saying, Hey man, let's go do a coffee break. And you're joking and you maybe get like four, maybe five hours of real core working time. Yeah. Um, everything else is very social based. There are a lot of meetings. Totally get that. But when you're at home, you're just kind of, it's just you, the computer and your, and your own creative thoughts. I, I feel like there's going to be a lot more productivity there. Yeah. Uh, I think from a, from a physical logistic standpoint of these other studios, they don't have to rent out these big ass studios anymore. You know, like think about how much rent and material and, and, uh, insurance and safety things that they, they get to save on or they don't have to deal with. You know, if you, if you, if you start running these virtual uh, productions, um, there's a huge benefit there. Now everyone can work from the comfort of their own home. You know, everyone's accountable. Um, you know, budget, budget, there's, you know, maybe the budget is a little bit more flexible due to that, you know? Um, yeah, and so there's a lot of weird positives that come out of you know this situation, um, and we just have to think about you know how to you know basically flip the script, right? How do we turn this shitty situation into something positive, 
and 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 how do we make it work for us? Because it is a total game changer. It's a total reformatting of everything. You know, we can't we can't necessarily run the way we were used to running it. Right. Um, so that's that's kind of how I see it. Um, yeah. I mean. So how uh, how 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 are you doing? How are you doing this this transition for yourself? I mean, we we kind of touched upon it uh, already, but let's maybe dive in in details on. What is how? What's the way you prepare for for work day? How do you schedule your? Do you schedule your day? And how do you work with um, your supervisors? You know, whether yeah. it's an art director, production designer, whoever. You know, how do you set up meetings? All of those things. You know, uh, what's what's your experience with this so far? So so far, um, you know, I'm trying to keep it as close to what I was doing physically. Um, you know, minus the drive factor. So because I'm driving now, I, I'm, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do my own personal work, right? Right. Um, so I try to get up really early before my daughter gets up. And so that gives me kind of like my own time. And I'm sure you, mm -hmm. you're like that too. Um, I'm and, quite opposite actually. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, <laughs> well, it's all good, you know? <laughs> My yeah. daughter is a total like night owl, dude. She'll go to sleep late. She'll she'll stay in bed pretty late. Um, and then so I've been, I I'll, I'm like, you know what? If you're gonna stay in bed late, I'm gonna get up even earlier. You know, I'll get up at like mm -hmm. five thirty, usually like like six six thirty. Damn. Um, man. and I'll just try to get cranking on. Just that's when I go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, that's that's the thing about working from home, right? You get to adjust your own hours. But um. Yep. Yep. But anyways, yeah. Going back to the main point of like. You know, scheduling a call with your art director, supervisor, production designer. You know, you you, you want to kind of have that fixed because I, I think I think the moment that is in schedule during your day, everything else has to be in alignment. So, you know, I, I try to make sure um, I have my schedule kind of pre-prepped and written out every single day. I know exactly what I'm going to get in, what what I need to accomplish for the day, what my updates are going to be, and then what I'm what I need to prepare for the next day. You know, and it's just. It's just trying to be organized. I think it's going to make everyone more organized. Um, and that's kind of what I had to do. And it's honestly gave me a lot more flexibility because if I get my assignments done earlier, then I can, I can take a little bit of a longer lunch break or, or I can end the day a little earlier, you know? Um, but it, it makes everything so much more efficient because, you know, you're planning, you're organizing, you're, you're, you're meeting with your supervisors, you're giving them exactly what they need, you're giving them all the, all the revisions and changes, and you're communicating with them, and, uh, and it just, it, it makes you a lot more accountable. And so, yeah. that's kind of the way I've been doing it, and, and for me, the, 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 the more planning and organization I can get done, really the reward is I get to, one, spend more time with family, but two, I get a lot more personal time to do, you know, personal artwork, which I, I, just I love to do you know and I that's kind of like my the carrot on the stick for me you know right so right right that's been that's kind of been my 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 current uh, state of mind um, in my current situation but um, how about for you man I mean you've been you've been working uh, from home you know you work with a lot of production designers on film and you know what what has your uh, your day-to-day -day been looking like um, it's a little different than yours. I, I wake up pretty late. <laughs> so for, for me, the commute was, was brutal because a, I work really late normally. Yeah. Um, and I'll explain why in a second. Um, and so when you work late, then you waking up early means you're not catching up on sleep. So that when I don't have enough sleep, I am the worst enemy of everyone around me. They <laughs> literally don't even talk to me if I've slept only like four hours. Like if I slept less than four hours, don't talk to me. <laughs> even even if you, even if I love you, <laughs> even if you're the most precious person to me, the only th there's one exception. I just cannot get mad on my daughter. Like I'm trying to like contain the rage. <laughs> <laughs> but on it, yeah, like the moment. The moment I'm not sleeping enough, I just become the worst enemy of everyone. I'm so groggy and, and, and fucked up, you know, <laughs> it's very difficult. And then like after after I catch up on sleep, it's like, oh, man, I have to apologize to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, but to me, so the way I set up my day is um, I like to figure out what is the main focus for the day. Yeah. 
I'm using this app that I'm not using it all the time, but it's really helpful every now and then. Uh, it's a, it's actually a Chrome extension. It's called Momentum. And the way I use it is, you know, it, it, it kind of gives you a to-do list with one main focus. And that's yeah. why I really like it. Would like, and you can set up if you if you get like a subscription, which is like five dollars a month or something like that. Uh, you can set up your own wallpapers, so you can be like you open a new tab. I, I've set it up so it's when you open a new tab, you get your main task to do right, right, right there. Oh, cool. so like if you if you if you get uh, stuck in the cycle of browsing and then opening new tabs all the time, it kind of reminds you all the time that you have this task on 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 your hand right. to do. Right. So I was like, oh shit, I still have to do this, you know? <laughs> um, so it's like a good d disruptor for distraction, like distraction disruptor almost, yeah. you know? Um, so I set up my day for one specific task that I need to do that's uh, mandatory for me to do, just one. Yeah. Uh, unless, unless I'm crunching and I, I know I have to do two projects, then I split the day. Okay, this amount of time has to be spent on this subject and this amount of day has to be spent on that subject right 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 then um i always make sure that i have you know a little bit of time for family as well as, especially now like mm -hmm. i actually extended that from like at least spending you know maybe half an hour to an hour every day to like three four hours actually that's good man um and so yeah it's 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 great but then like after like three hours like fuck i need to get 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 something going you know <laughs> <laughs> even though sometimes it's just good to you, you know do that family time my brain is just like it's just torturing me towards the end it's like do do stuff do stuff do stuff do stuff do stuff you know? yeah. <laughs> um and then towards the end of the day this is this is my time meaning any anything else that I had planned to do, this is what I'm going to do it. And I usually set up goals of how much I want to achieve during the week or doing, you know, OK, this week I want to make sure that I have a podcast uh, ready or, you know, schedule for the next one. Um, I want to make sure that I have some progress done on my film and, you know, I set up a specific amount of time or a specific amount of progress that I wish I had. Mm -hmm. And um, and whatever other projects you, you set up to do. So if you want to do like illustration or, or something like you just I just make sure make sure, OK, that's when I'm going to work on it. Right. Um, and I usually set up like a cutoff time, meaning, OK, if when I if, if I for if I don't get into like a, z a zone where I'm flowing and, and not paying attention to anything time whatsoever, if mm -hmm. I don't get into that zone, because if you do, then you don't want to interrupt it, right? Because this, this, this is the time you're the most productive person. Right. Um, if I don't get to that zone, 2 a.m., 3 a.m. is like the latest I should be sitting and doing anything. Uh, so I don't wake up like super late and, and get all, all of my day screwed up, right? So right. I try to sort of like keep it loose in a way where I know I have to do something. And I have also like a leeway of the of the end of the day in case something goes wrong. I still have time to catch up after my family time. Right. Um, so ideally, the way I, I set it up with clients is I would want to have a call in the morning, but not too early. <laughs> like, <laughs> not, like 8 a.m. calls is like I always say no to those. Uh, 9 30, 9 15 is like the earliest I would ever do a call. I try to set them up for like 10 ish, like 10, maybe right. 10 30. So I have like, I can wake up and, and like really wake up, you know, um, <laughs> eat, well, I don't eat breakfast, but like just drink a coffee and then relax be, and like really wind myself up for work. Um, right. And, and, and I, I almost never, well, never is, is a, is a, is a hard statement. I try to make sure that my clients see the work in the morning if if I can instead yeah, of yeah. cuz uh, with the time zones and everything uh well the, with the with the film it's it's not really a time zone issue but it's also like film industry the production designers work different hours some of them yeah. uh, uh work really early and and finish work really early some of them work late and if you work with a production designer who who finishes work really early and you set an expectation that they're going to see work before you before they end their work 
then you're shortening your time or it means you have to wake up really early. So if you're a morning person, that's right. fine. If you're if you don't right. like waking up in the morning and, and because everyone is different, right? I don't like waking up in the morning. If, if I wake up in the morning, my, my, my product, productivity sucks. I'm so groggy because I'm not like even if I'm really well rested, like <laughs> morning time is just not good for me. Yeah. Um, well, you, you know, what's interesting is artists, um, you know, I mean, I, I used to be like that. Uh, I, I used to, you know, just you work through the night, right? And um, I still think that there's something to it where, where you have you have kind of like that that quiet time where like in, the entire world is just like sleeping. And that's kind of yeah. where all the creative, creative juices are flowing. Right. And that, that's what's great about working from home is is you get to create that schedule and if you if you want to offset and you're like you know what i'm going to start working at 6 6 6 p.m to 4 in the morning then that's going to be your core hours and um and that's i think that's what's that's what what's great about this you know working from home is is just the flexibility and i, I think you're gonna you're, you're gonna truly generate a lot more work and and yeah. more productive um and so i mean i i had to force my schedule just um, because my daughter is more proactive at nighttime. And so I'm kind of like, fuck, I don't want to get up early. But if I get up early, then I'll have I'll have that, you know, that personal time. <laughs> so right. It's it's I've kind of had to adjust to it. And it, it's taken me a, a little bit of time. But um, I've, that's just kind of how it is for me. How long she stays up? She'll stay up till. I mean, because you know, we have her at home. We took her out of daycare, but she'll stay up till, uh, you know, like 1 a.m. You know, <laughs> sometimes like 1.30. That's exactly like mine. Yeah. <laughs> her brain is just firing off on all cylinders. And she's like, woo! And she's like, let's watch Frozen again. And I'm like, for the fifth time? Really? <laughs> uh, how early she wakes up. And so she'll, she'll wake up. She'll get like about like a solid you know, 10 hours of sleep. So she'll wake up around, you know, let's see what, what, what is that? Like maybe 10, nine, 10. Okay. Yeah. Very similar. Yeah. Very similar. <laughs> so I'm kind of like, okay, if I do the math here, um, all right, if you're going to get up around, you know, nine 30, 10 o'clock and I have to at least get up at, you know, six. So I'll have like, you know, three, four hours of, of, of personal alone time, you know, to get stuff done. Right. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> But you're not getting eight hours of sleep, though. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know what is cool though is is what what I what I really liked about what you said earlier was kind of creating a, a creating a rule um, for yourself and for you know you know your family family that you know that stays with you, which is when the doors close, that means you know you're at the office, and so um, yeah. I'm glad that's something that my daughter she picked up on really early. Was uh, you know when I teach at Brainstorm online class, my doors closed. She hears the student's voice. She hears my voice, and she doesn't even dare to open my door. That's good. Um, and so it, it's it was really interesting because it's kind of this awareness, um, and and for her to understand that there's a certain level of professionalism, and uh, and and that you know you, you have to be respectful when when people are working. You know you can't be disruptive and. I think it's good because it's it, it's something that they're gonna carry on when they grow up, and they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna probably they're gonna treat it the same way for themselves. Yeah, so. it's pretty it's pretty irritating when someone interrupts the work. I was actually <laughs> talking uh, talking about this with Ash the other day. Yeah, and uh, he sent me he sent me that yeah. clip from uh, The Shining. You remember remember The Shining? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, Kubrick's film. Yeah. There's that scene where where his wife enters the room when he's typing. Yeah, in the big and, big hall. Yeah, yeah, and and asks like, "Hey, like the weather is changing and blah blah blah," and talks about, you know, <laughs> "Hell, bring you pancakes later" or, or shit like that. Uh, and then he snaps on her. Like just like <laughs> if I'm typing or I'm in this room, don't fucking interrupt me. <laughs> <laughs> And it's just like, and, and I, I was talking with Ash, it was like, you know, for a regular person who's watching that movie, this guy is an asshole. Oh, totally. Like, absolute asshole. And and from like a social perspective, that guy's asshole. Yeah. But from artist perspective, 
It's like, this is exactly how we feel. <laughs> this is what we want. <laughs> so this is what we, we're assholes yeah. to, your, to, yeah. to your average person. <laughs> But to us, yeah. We're like, yeah, yeah, that's the way, man. <laughs> it really <laughs> is. I mean, I don't know. Uh, answer me this. When, you're, when you have an idea, right, like you want to do something, are you able to focus on anything else, no matter what you're doing? Even if you're, t- if you're, if you're spending time with family and you get that, I need to do this. Like, w- what is happening with you at that, uh, at that moment? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I'm honestly able to, it, it's challenging. For sure, right? <laughs> but but I'm, I'm still able to. I, I think it's something that you have to power through, man. You know, I because you know there's going to be so many disruptions and and things that that come in the way, and uh, you know, it's it's one of those things for me. It's like it's going to be a challenge for me, and I have to figure out. You know what? Um, I can't I can't block other people or blame other people for uh, losing my my concentration or sight on things. I have to just kind of figure out a way to make it work, you know? Right. So when I have like a, when I have an idea or a concept or, um, I'm, I'm, I'm in, I'm in the middle of building a class curriculum, you know, I have to, I'm kind of like, what's that one movie, uh, that, um, oh shoot, Christopher Nolan did. Is it Memento? Is it Memento? Right. It was with Christian Bale. Yeah. I forgot. It was. It was. It was. No, the, that was Machinist. No, no. Um, it was, Memento was with. What, what's that guy? It's. It's. I might be getting it wrong. Fuck. Uh, but it's basically <laughs> the guy that like forgets. He has like short term memory, right? And and he has to retrace all of his memories. Leading, Memento. Yeah, and, and leading back up to um, you know, the the case or 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 the uh, the the issue. And so it's like for me, it's kind of like that. Like I have to write kind of like where I'm at, where, what my status bar is, and I have to kind of retrace and get back to that state of mind. And that's kind of how it's been, you know, and, and, and it's kind of just become a habit um, where, you know, I'll, I'll kind of be in a groove and it'll be great. I'll get, I'll get a lot of stuff done, but then, you know, you'll have a huge disruptor, like, you know, like something might come up and you have to stop, but then I'll have to, I'll put a pin in it and I'll come back and I'll try to build that momentum again. Right. Um, and that's just kind of how it's been for me. You know, um, but what what do you do when you when you're not working specifically? Like my question is more of like, okay, now let's say you're playing with your daughter or you're having time with family, and then it just strikes you. It's like fuck, this oh. is the best idea. I just need to do it now. And then, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's frustrating. Yeah, I, 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 it's at least it, frustrating. It yeah, yeah, it, it is. Um. Cause you know, you, you kind of want to be like, all right, I'll be back in five hours. Hold on. <laughs> Stay there. Just, just sit there. Like and su- and suddenly. Yeah. Hold on. I'll be right back. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's tricky, man. You know? <clears throat> and then that, that's kind of like what I was talking about. Like even, even on like, like I get a lot of like my best ideas when I'm driving and then I'm like, holy shit, I got to bring out my phone recorder. And I'm, I'm not the type to do that. And I started recording my own voice and I sound like a mm. idiot. I'm like, <laughs> I have this idea. And, uh, you know, what if, uh, what if the composition is set this way? And, you know, it's like this and that. And I'm just like, what the hell? But it's, it's interesting because I'm able to capture the, the, the core of the idea at that moment while it's fresh. Yeah. Cause it will, it will fade away, you know, like you, other things will happen and you, and you'll kind of think about what you're thinking or what, what you, what idea you had and it's gone. So, um, I don't know, maybe that's something we have to do is just have, have your phone on, on recording like a, like a, like a quick shortcut to record your, your thoughts. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's like, um, voice to text apps out there that yeah. you don't have to listen to yourself. Just read it. <laughs> yeah. No, I'll, I'll, cause I'll, I'll get punished by my wife if, if I, if I totally just abandon my daughter, you know, just like, <laughs> it's supposed to be your time. And I'm like, awesome. <laughs> and then boom, I'm sleeping on the couch for the next two weeks, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's one of the reasons why you want to have those boundaries, right? Like once yeah. you set it up, like it, you give, you give others expectations that, okay, in that time, this is work time. I'm not doing anything else. And then if I'm doing my family time, that's my family time. And, and then you, you impose the same restrictions on yourself. Yeah. Yeah. But it is frustrating because like <laughs> my point, my point with this was 
you know the way the way artist artists and creatives mind work is that you know like the 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 pursuit of goal you have within yourself whether it's like you know i want to create this illustration or i'm working on this project or whatever that is right it's so strong it's very difficult to rein in and you get pissed off frustrated and and disappointed if you cannot cannot do it yeah right yeah yeah it's one of those things where it's like oh fuck <laughs> I wish I don't. I, I wish I didn't have that. You know, like sometimes, sometimes I wish my my brain wouldn't work that way. Right. Honestly, yeah. where it's like, okay, I can tu- I can zone out, focus on on other things, and not feel like I'm the laziest, you know, asshole <laughs> if I'm spending time with family. You know, it's, um, it's it's hard, man. I I it's it's you know it's like being a creative mind. Um, it's not a switch that you can turn on and off. You know? Yeah. Um. I mean, luckily my wife, she's an artist, so she, she understands that very well. But, you know, I have, I have friends and family who, um, who don't understand that. And, you know, they're kind of like, you can come back and draw any time, man. Like, <laughs> no, you can't. I can't, dude. Like, I can't just. <laughs> That's not how it works. Do it. You know, I can't just, like, get into it and suddenly, you know, I, I hit the resume button. Like, you're watching it. Yeah. It just doesn't work that way. Um, and so, um, yeah, you you know, just having that schedule is, is, it is very good. And, um, I, I, I also try to, you know, you know, having family time or having personal time, um, I, I really try to take advantage of like, if I'm not working, um, let's really try to put a hundred, and ten percent effort and attention to, um, to not working, you know? Mm-hmm. Whether it's hanging out with your family or doing other activities, so that your brain kind of has a moment to, to kind of reset, to rest, you know, and get back to, right. you know. So. But it's 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 <clears throat> another argument to disruption, right? Like if you think about it, the the way we work, it's very difficult to. And I I I think it's not only creative people. I think it's it's it. It's something that applies to most of the work that requires focus. Yeah. Uh, is that, that that idea that the, the moment you get interrupted, it's not like you, it's like a pause and then res, resume. It's, it just doesn't work that way because the way, uh, the way you're just wired to think about, like you're thinking about something and your mind is so deep into it that you're basically shutting off everything else. The whole world around you is shut off. Like you're not even paying attention to anything. Right. And once it's that disrupted, it's like that, that memento film you talked about. It's just like, oh, it's not, I have not, now I have a short, short-term memo, memory loss and now I have to figure out what I was doing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For me, like it, 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 it doesn't come in one big wave. I have like these short bursts, um, kind of creative moments. And so I have to try to capture those. Um, like I, I, either, I either have a sketchbook next to me and I'm just like doing a really crummy drawing, um, mm-hmm. to kind of capture that idea and then I'll come back to it. Um, or, or it's, it's like, like I was saying, like when I, if I'm driving, then I'll record it. Um, and so, you know, it's for me, it, I, I then I have to kind of collect all of that data and then put it together and be like, what the fuck was I thinking about? And then kind of retrace it and then, um, and then, and then really complete my idea from there. Right. Yeah. I, I think it is, I think it's just different for everybody, but I think regard, regardless, you know, um, if you have an amazing idea, you know, try to execute it, um, or do something, you know? I'm trying to remember which book was that um, that was talking about this very subject. It was actually quite quite a few uh, books that I've read that were touching upon the distractions and the flow states. I think one of them was, let me think, one of those books that I've read that was really good. It was kind of like a good scientific um, breakdown of, you know, some of the most popular athletes and, and people and the extra extraordinary people getting like massive results from short bursts of um you know work i think that book was deep work written yeah. by cal newport that was the was that was, that was, that was the first one um i think essentialism no not essentialism mastery might have been the other book that yeah, i was talking about it a good one yeah by robert green yeah, that's a great. Yeah, that's a great book. 
uh another one i've read recently which was good it wasn't it wasn't like better the other two were better in my opinion but but it was this is the this is the book that i i would actually recommend to anyone who's like in in the transition is like doubting that that hey like maybe remote work is better for me it's called indistractable I, I, it's a pretty short book um to read I actually i i usually just uh, listen to audiobooks i, I don't read books much but i, I just rather listen to them mm-hmm. instead because it's like when you're driving it's actually perfect when you can listen to the the audiobook uh it's called indistractable how to control your attention That's yeah cool. <laughs> by near uh Eyal yep. and Julie, Eyal? Julie yep. Lee yeah those are the those are the people that started uh Basecamp oh wow yeah so it's oh. uh it's 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 pretty it's a pretty pretty good book pretty good I I I mean most of the things that it, that it talks about I I kind of already knew because I've been doing it for like past five years <laughs> <laughs> but I, I was like listening to listening to it towards the end of my of my you know on-site work right before the pandemic hit I was like right. frustrated, I was like, ah, oh, fuck, what, what am I doing in traffic? <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, it was just ramping up. That book was like, oh yeah, maybe I should pause it for now until I get to my remote work, just yeah. to like reinforce myself <laughs> and not get frustrated. Um, that's, that's fun, man. There, have you heard of, um, there's a really other, there's another fun one, uh, The Art of Not Giving a Fuck. I've I've seen the headlines of it, but I've never tried it out. Is it good? <laughs> that one's awesome. Um, yeah, I'll try it out for it, sure. It's a great book. I mean, it, it talks about. It's by Mark Manson. Yeah, Mark Manson. Yeah, okay. it, and and the audiobook is great. Um, but it talks about just kind of like everyday things of um, not getting so caught up with other people's matters or issues because then you mm. start to expend or use a lot of your own, your own time and energy and concentration when you can be focused, you can be redirecting that to yourself. Right. And, and it's, he doesn't, it, it's like written in such a comical manner. Cause I'm like, shit, you're like, dude, that makes, that's so funny, man. Cause you know, my wife and I will get caught up in other people's problems. We're like, God, they should be doing this, this and that. And we'll forget about ourselves you know, or, or what, or what we have to deal with. And I think it's such a good reminder of everyone has things that they have that, that they have issues with. And it's always good to like prioritize. And if you don't need to do not get consumed by other people's problems, you know, right. Fix, fix your own, get through with your own first. And then if you have, if you have the, uh, the, the energy and time, you know, help other people out, you know, but, yeah, I'll put the links for those books in the footnote for the podcast yeah. so everyone can grab it. That was probably going to be uh, Amazon affiliate links. So doesn't mean that it's going to be more expensive. It just means that the podcast is going to get a kickback from any sale. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, those those books are good. Uh, good to check it out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to definitely check out the the one you've mentioned, the, su- the subtle the art. Subtle art. Giving a fuck. Yeah. It has like an orange and orange. It sounds like fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's I a fun. Found it. Yeah. It's, it's not, it's not anything like serious, you know, um, but it's just like, I, I, I get a chuckle out of it. So. Yeah, how do you deal with, with the, the the thing you you said at the very end, um, which which is covered in the book? You know, the sort of like not getting uh, too distracted and not paying too much attention to other people's. And I'm not saying your family or or specifically maybe your your close friends when they they are in need. <laughs> right, right. It's like, oh, that's the right time to help them, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but like, you know, I guess it's it's always an ongoing topic where. When people reach out to you constantly, and I'm pretty sure you get emails all the time or, or DMs on social media from your fans and people from that are associated with school, all that. But how do you deal with making sure that, okay, what can I do to not sound dismissive? Do I have to reply to everything? How do I deal with that? Because the, the way the, the way I, I think about it is, um, or I've been thinking about it is, you know, it's like, okay, if, if it's a message that I can reply in, in, in short amount of time, as I'm having my attention on it, I'll do it. But if it's like a loaded question, I'm just not going to do it. It's just not enough time in my day to pay attention to it. Like, how do you deal with, with stuff like that? Um, I mean, 
again, not to sound robotic or, or stiff about it, but I would, I, I always just try to prioritize because it's, mm-hmm. it, it's hard. You know, you, you're going to get a lot of people who are going to come to you for guidance and they're going to have a lot of questions about their own problems or their own uh, current state of maybe portfolio building or school questions or industry mm-hmm. questions and things like that. Um, I always try to just make sure like, okay, I, I'll have that on the backlog and, and I'll, I'll try to answer, answer it when I have time. But I always try to make sure I get my immediate things done first, my own priorities done first and taken care of, and then and then work my way down that list. Um, and you know, I think I think you and I, being uh, representatives of our own educational in, educational platforms, you know, we we have a responsibility, right? And so right. I think we need to we need to you know be held accountable and and try to help students in need. So that part. I, I, I try as much as I can to help people out, you know, mm-hmm. but I think kind of the part where, where I'll try to, uh, allocate less time is if my friend has, you know, like a question about, you know, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, dog. What brush do you use? <laughs> yeah. Or, or, or not even art related. He'll have a question about like some sort of, uh, housing question like, Hey man, I need to get my roof repaired. Like what? It, what service did you use? And I'm kind of like, oh, that's cool. I, I don't even fucking know. And you know, he'll, <laughs> he will try to extend it and drag it on, you know, to be like a you know two hour conversation. And for me, I'm kind of like, yeah, you know, let me get back to you on that. But then it's kind of like when those kinds of things, you know, those are like the daily simple shit that kind of can suck you in and pull yeah. you out of like your 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 priorities or what you should be focusing on. That's kind of where I'm like, I'm thinking about the subtle art of not giving a fuck where I'm like, right, yeah. you figure that out. Um, and if I have time, I'll, I'll try to help you with that answer. But I can't just stop what I'm doing to just help you fix that one thing because then it's going to stop. It's going to prevent me from finishing my task, you know, and so mm. it it's just comes down to priority, man. And yeah, so it's, it's, it's kind of a good reminder on that because I'll have like family members or, uh, friends that have like relationship problems and they'll, they'll call me and they'll, they'll ask about like, Oh my God, I'm having this. And it's a hard balance and you know, it'll consume a lot of your time. Yeah. And I'm just like, Oh, that's cool, man. I I'm hearing you out. Um, you know, let me get back to you when I have a, you know, an answer. How many people you alive, uh, alive, allow in your life to be like really close with you? Meaning like, okay, if that person reaches out with a question, Mm -hmm. I'm 100% going to answer right away. (laughs) Uh, Well, I think just family and close friends, you know, the people that that matter to you the most. um, I think I think they take priority, you know. Um, Yeah. And and if it's if it's if it's something that's, you know, that's kind of where I'll I'll, I'll literally put work on pause to help them out because honestly, I don't give a fuck, you know, like they're, their family and friends that, that I love. So, you know, I'll dedicate all the time that I need, um, to, to help them out. Um, and then everyone else, you know, I'll, I'll try to treat it, you know, business as usual, you know, I'll, I'll try to get to them when, when I have the proper amount of time. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I, 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 tr- I want to try to not like dismiss people. Um, you know, I, I, I want to, I want to let them know like, Hey, I'm really busy. And I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible, but I don't want to, I, I want to try not to have that attitude of like, you know, fucking you're not important. So I'm not going to talk to you kind of, <laughs> kind of mentality. Cause it's, 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 it's overwhelming. You know, you get a lot of people that will that'll reach out to, to you for help and guidance, but you, you know, I'm just trying to go down that list, you know? Yeah. Close friends, business partners and family. Yeah. Those are like, okay, I can drop my work for this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have like maybe two or three people who are in my close friends circle. It's like any question you have and you they, you only get people like that in your life if you know they are like they not that sounds kind of condescending deserve your time. <laughs> but it usually means that you, you've done enough for them yeah. and they've done enough for you to become that close. You know, yeah. it's, it's a sort of like a very delicate and long term relationship that is worth a lot versus the random random people that yeah. might be the nicest people on earth but you literally have no you no attachment to them meaning they are just 
people out there yeah that hey they're maybe fans maybe maybe they they love your work maybe they look up look up to you as uh as their personal heroes but it's so difficult like the the more popular you get the the more difficult it, it becomes to handle and right you know i've noticed that a lot of like really extremely popular artists um especially on the social media side mm -hmm. what happens a lot they they just they just hire a like not i don't know if it's agents or or producers or just someone to help to come through emails and like redirect que like common questions like okay there is a there's a faq read that you know and it might sound like it's oh that person is so dismissive but you have to realize i think that um you know I, i'm not me and you we are quite popular i would say but not like wildly popular mm -hmm. there are some there are some uh artists out there whether they are on youtube or instagram or twitter that have like hundreds of thousands of followers yeah and you can assume like I, I, based on the rate of messages that i get i can assume that some of those people get at least 20 50 or 100 messages a day oh yeah or more or more or, or more right absolutely and it's like and some of them are just wall of text <laughs> it's just like what the fuck <laughs> how am i supposed to answer this like reading this will take me 15 minutes yeah 15, okay five minutes per per message even if you get 20 messages that's a whole hour that's two hours of just reading yeah. not even replying yeah like <laughs> so it's like all right two hours just to read the messages and then another two hours to reply if i'm just lazy yeah i'm just like lazily like fuck you and then send all right <laughs> but then like meaningfully uh, replying to messages that it just becomes overwhelming well i think i think if it's like a social media platform and that's part of your business then you know that's that's part of your responsibility right right but it, again like you have to be realistic on how much you can do versus yep. And what you, yeah, I guess, I guess it depends. Yeah. If, you, if you're just building platform for communication, that, that, I guess that would be a reason to reply, right? Because yeah. that's what you're building for. But if, if your social media platform is your portfolio and you're building it just to get following and get people to appreciate your work uh, and connect with them in, in that way, I mean, at some point you, you will have to make a difficult choice of like, okay, I'm only going to allow this amount of messages to go through or, I'll have to like change something because this is way too overwhelming at this point, you know? Right, right. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, it's tricky. You know, there was one analogy that I that I that always stuck with me. Um, I forgot who said it, but they said like, you know, if your if your life is like a movie, who's going to be the cast members in your in your right. movie, right? And so, you know, I keep all the the important people close to me, um, you know, and I and I try to allocate the most time for them and any additional time you know it's kind of like it's just extra sunset extra sunset. <laughs> yeah i mean yeah, it's kind of like you know it's like hey yeah, ev because everyone has, has you know very close people in their own lives that they allocate time to mm -hmm. and you know <clears throat> i think i think we just have to all be sensitive that you know if if you're busy with your life i shouldn't have that expectation that you know you're gonna you know, accommodate for my needs, you know, because you have your your family, your own needs, you know, things that you need to uh, you need to attend to. So, yeah, I think I think a good majority. I, I want to assume that a good majority of people are um, are are they, they know that, you know, or they should know that. Yeah, I try to acknowledge as much as I can, you know, when I get messages personally, if if, if I can answer without getting overwhelmed and completely disrupting my day, I will answer. Yeah. But mostly, mostly I'll just acknowledge with like, Hey, I acknowledge you and like, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, to me, the saving grace was podcast. Honestly, I think, I think, dude, I, I, I honestly love the part podcast because yeah, you're, you're essentially speaking to hundreds and thousands of people and, and, and you're connecting with them, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think I think you're already doing it. You're using this platform to 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 answer some of those questions, to give them an insight on on how you how you have a work life balance. You know. 
Uh, yeah, it definitely helps with answering a lot of like common questions. Yeah. You know, it's very, very easy to say. For me, it's very easy to then answer and say like, look, I don't have time to answer it here, but check this podcast and 100% I already answered that for you. Right. You just have to do the work to find it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I, I'm trying to, I'm, tr I'm, I, I've kind of fell off that bandwagon a little bit, but I'm trying to do that with, uh, you know, like let's say my daily sketches, you know, mm -hmm. people, people ask me like, how do you manage, you know, your, your time to do personal work? Well, let me show you, let me actually show you, you know, by posting up a piece of artwork and letting you know that this was done during lunch. You right. Know? Um, and not just telling you through text or telling you through a message, but let me show you and let, let's try to get everyone else on board. Um, and, and, you know, just kind of get people to physically see, you know, um, you know, the answer in front of them. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, I found that to be, you know, somewhat of a, another way of, uh, communicating and, uh, and getting people involved in your world, you know? So have you yourself like, uh, thought about doing a podcast at all? Um, not necessarily. I mean, I really enjoy what you and Ash are doing. <laughs> I know, I know that, uh, brainstorm has started, uh, their own educational podcast. Yeah. I saw that. Uh, yeah. Just for educational, you know, uh, you know, focuses. Um, so we're, we're gonna, we're, we're doing one that's purely for, for, for the school and for students. Um, but in regards to kind of life and professional career and stuff like that, I, I don't know. I, 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 just, I like, I, I like what you and Ash are doing, you know, it's, it's, I think it's, it's such a great platform, you know, um, I like, I, I would, I don't, I wouldn't mind being a guest and being a part of that. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, man. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's an undertaking for sure. Like, you know, because like if you're starting a podcast, then there has to be an idea behind it as well. Like to sort at least to some degree, yeah. um, yeah, I, I, I see that. Yeah, I, I would say, you know, to me, it was like, yeah, it definitely uh, it's like it saved a lot of my sanity, especially when you work from home right. and you're not interacting with your peers as much. Uh, I, I also found it to be a, a really good tool to catch up with people as well. Yeah, because oftentimes, you know, we're so busy that we I mean, we could be literally neighbors and not have time for one another. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and that happens to friends as well. Um, but, but then you, then you schedule this very specific time and you have a conversation set up for just catching up on, on, on general level, like, like we're doing right now where we're discussing different subjects and then having conversation about it, which is something we would normally do when we, when we met, you know, when we, if we meet and have a conversation. It would be very similar to this, maybe with exception that we would might might curse more, or <laughs> yeah, yeah, or say some unruly things here and there that are not kosher for a general public. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that could happen, um, and maybe talk about stuff that we normally you would normally not talk about in public, right? Like in between the conversations, but but the gist of it would be pretty similar, you know, and in most cases. Um, so it definitely, uh, it was like one of those things where. Okay, I can carve out a certain amount of time in my week that will cover most of those needs that come with, you know, c communication through the social media, you know? Yeah. Um, definitely helps. Uh, yeah, I saw you guys were doing with the, we're doing a brainstorm podcast. Um, how, how is that going? How is that going? for? Because I saw James was doing mostly of mostly it, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's something that James is heading with uh, our other co-founder, Thomas. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, they're, it, they're, they're, they're doing it to, uh, you know, connect with student community, you know, ask questions and, to, you know, another way of inspiring, um, you know, right. our body. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're taking a lot of notes from you guys, you know, for sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and really it's just, you know, again, I, I think the intent was to use it as a platform to just communicate, you know, and answer some of those, some of those questions. And it, it's, it's more... It's, it definitely feels a lot more um, human, I guess. So you don't you don't have to read a text, but you feel like you're getting you're 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 actually talking with people and you're hearing a voice. Uh, so that inter the level of interaction is is, is quite nice. Um, 
So are you guys doing it live or it's pre-recorded? Yeah, it is, it is. It is actually live. So I think okay. I think you know we're setting it up in a way where it's you know Q and A, um, and it's again it's all it's all centered around um, you know you know education and student you know kind of mode and and you know educational philosophy and things like that. So it's right. it's the the focus of that podcast is is more geared towards you know uh, brainstorm school and uh, and just kind of like the life of being a student. And, and how to manage right. your time and stuff like that. So nice, yeah. nice, nice. Yeah. How about you, man? How's how's everything with Learn Square going? Like, I always see these awesome courses, man. Yeah, we have so many classes in works. It's kind of insane. Uh, it's all gonna slow down because of the coronavirus, obviously. Um, our expectation is that you know we have like we're trying to pay attention to what's going on in the world with the markets. And like the last thing you want to do is um, overwhelm people with like, hey, buy this, buy this, buy that, buy this, you know. And when I was like, hey, I ha I have no money for rent, you know. Right, right. Um, I mean, I, the whole situation, I I don't think it changed much for us because we were op operating uh, pretty much everyone we work with with within the company works remotely, you know. Right. And we already had that going for for years, ever since we started actually. So. And we're like nothing changed in terms of like what what the people we work with are, are doing. They're it's like a regular day for them. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of uh, we don't have that many uh, full time employees because just the, the the kind of business we do and and you know it from even from brainstorm right. There's a certain amount of work that you might do full time, but it's very rare. Right. Uh, with with the school environment. And most most of the people that work with you, I'm, I'm, I would assume, are on on the contract as well. Like they are not full time, right? Because there's just not no need for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, we have we have people that have been working long term, like Momo and and Aaron and and uh, Nick and Pat. Uh, all of those guys been been with us for years now. Mm -hmm. We have like no almost no rotation. I mean, we we had. Um, how many people we had? Like we we only had one employee, like employee, uh, one guy John that was working with us for a while, and but his his career changed and you know he got a I think he got a job somewhere else and you know he left, mm -hmm. but we all left on the good terms. Uh, we were actually recommending him, I believe, uh, like as a point of reference. Um, I can't remember exactly anymore. But, you know, we've been working with Momo for years and Nick, who's our editor and Pat, who's, you know, helping us with the website and um, Aaron uh, Danda from from South Africa. He's doing freaking amazing job with the with like the social media because he's handling that. And um, yeah, and, and our accountant, um, Calvin, that guy's. Oh my god, that guy is amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's like he'll that. call you. He'll call you and night. Like, what is this on your credit card? You know? <laughs> <laughs> what is that five dollar expense? You know? yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, he's he's good. Um, no, we, we're we're still going. Nothing changes for us. Um, it's it's good. We have a lot of new classes coming up. Obviously, like the, one of the one of the most, and you know it as well. Like one of the cha most challenging parts about education is just constantly being on top of what's going on. Yeah. And making sure that okay, am, are we doing the right thing? You always ask yourself that question, right? Are we doing the right thing? Are people actually learning anything from that? You know. And that will be a question to you because like. You guys, you guys had a different setup uh, for the longest time, and I, I don't think this the situation will change much for you outside of just like we have to adapt now for online for a while. Yeah. But you, I'm pretty sure you had a lot of success stories, right? Where you would have your ex students coming back to you, so like, look, this is where I am right now. Oh yeah, that's that's our that's our pride and joy, man. Yeah. I mean, I I honestly can care less about you know the 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 success of the school you know because if the success of the students i mean it sounds really cliche if they go out and they're badasses and they're working we know we're doing something right you know yeah because I, I i i want to be different from all those you know bigger institutions like that that take you know like like a school like again like art center great 
school has a great brand behind it, but it's too damn expensive, you know? And, you know, it's, it's I, I feel like the goal is you want to get these students, you want to train them so they can get a job. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I feel like, I feel like over the years they've kind of lost it. It's that, that meaning has kind of gone away. It's kind of become more about come to the school, you know, get a great educational experience and that's kind of it. But for us, it's more like, how do we teach students to be prepared for the industry? How do we teach them the right tools? But how do we make sure that they're building the right portfolio to actually get a job? You know? And for yeah. us, our ultimate test is when we have a student that comes into Brainstorm from the beginning, middle, and end, when they exit and we get them to actually apply to a studio and they get a job at DreamWorks TV or a game studio, we've done our job. You know, yeah. we've succeeded. We know that that platform has worked for them and that is our measurement of success. Yeah. You know, nothing better than having your ex student reach out and say like, thank you. Yeah. I just started working on ILM Dude, because of it's, you. It's, it's insane. Like, oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> like that's, that's all I really remember. I don't remember, you know, like, wow, last term I had, you know, a full class. I don't even remember that. I remember, holy shit, my, like, five of my students work at Treyarch now, you know, or, yeah. or, you know, half of, half of our brainstorm guys went over to DreamWorks TV working on, you know, like the next, uh, you know, uh, how to train your dragon TV show series. Like that's so much more exciting to me. Um, and, and we we're just trying to figure out like, okay, how do we do more of that? How do we, how do we, you know, try to help students who are coming from nothing, who have no, yeah. no drawing experience and how do we, build that education up, uh, education up for them so that they have a pathway to success. And so, um, that's been our main primary focus, you know? Yeah. It was this book I was reading again, going back to books, man. Um, it's <laughs> from Seth, Go Seth Godin. Uh, he writes a lot of marketing books. He's like one of the, you know, design, uh, he's very popular in the design community right. for marketing. Uh, he wrote this book. It's called "This Is Marketing," and it actually talks about this 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 exact thing you, you just said about like, oh, I, I hate to sound cliche, you know? <laughs> uh, but one of the things that is mentioned in the book, uh, which I think I agree, it's like, you know, when you have if you can build a community around your company that really love what you do, um, you're gonna have if you can get those hardcore fans that will buy will buy from you because they love you, not because you, you do one, one specific thing. Yeah. That's such, so, much, so much more valuable than constantly chasing for new people, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, because the, and it's, because it's a difficult game to play, very difficult game to play. And I, it sounds like a game, but uh, we know what I mean, right? Yeah, yeah. Because I think ultimately you as a brand, you as a product, um, is is the final experience you know yeah um i actually kind of go back to like this that the tv show you know on shark tank there's like another uh yeah it's like another tv show that comes out um called the prophet i haven't seen that that one's awesome man like the guy uh he's he's this guy he's this uh ceo who goes around and uh you know helps these businesses um and his name is marcus lamonis and he kind of goes by like three basic fundamental thoughts, which is people, product, and process. Mm. The people have to be great. The product has to be really good. And the process has to be just watertight. <laughs> and that's the thing that I was kind of like always thinking about. I'm like, you know, the people for, for our school and, and for your school, it's the community. It's, it's great teachers, great students, you know, yeah. it's such a healthy environment. The product is going to be in the classes, right? where the classes yeah. are just so well designed and, 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 and created and structured in a way where you're going to see successful results. Um, and the process is making sure, ensuring that the people understand the class and it's easy to follow and that there's yeah. a pathway to success, a pathway forward. And so it's, it's kind of this like circular, you know, graph that kind of feeds into each other. You know, yeah, and allows for uh, allows for an overall good experience um, from a student standpoint, and a, you know a really good business model 
you know? And so um, that's something that I've been, I've been constantly reminding ourselves, our, 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 you know, myself of brainstorm or anything that I'm involved with, which is, you know, are the people great? Is the product great? Is yeah. the process great? You know? And so, yeah, dude, it's, it's a fun show, man. If, if you haven't checked it out already. Yeah, I'll check it out for yeah, sure. It's definitely fun. Yeah. It's difficult. Like, it's like you always, you, you, like the reality is like, you look at the business you run uh, and it's, and you have to put that business hat, like the, the tie and, you know, the, <laughs> the whole outfit. Yeah. I'm a businessman now because yeah. we as artists, we, like we're so terrible about business in general, I would say, you know, like right. the way we think about businesses, we think it's like the, the most cliche thing to do is like, oh, it's only for like those assholes in the suits, you know. Those douchebags that drive a Porsche. Those douchebags, yeah, who yeah. drive a Porsche. Um, you know, people have conflicted opinions about um, about Gary V, right? But I think what he says about artists having like needing needing to know how. I think he mentioned it was either him or someone else. I I think it was him. Right. Uh, talking about putting that business suit on and being a business. Like it's so important because that's your bread and butter at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. And like dispelling the myth of like, oh, that's that's what we're not supposed to do. Like, but who's who said that? Like, usually people who are, who are doing that's what's not supposed to do are becoming really successful and they break the the barriers and create new products that people enjoy. Right. You remember when um, PewDiePie started playing games and recording that right everyone okay. was thinking it's stupid now it's now it's twitch yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> right so um so those are the things that uh that we like we just cannot take for granted like oh that's uh, i'm not i'm i'm too good to do that you know or like right, right. that's that's not for me um but with business it's, it's that right and there's it's always this question it's always this battle between okay there's two responsibilities I have here. One, am I doing it for, what am I doing it for? And, you know, I think, I think between you and me, we're pretty similar in terms of like, we really like doing that stuff, right? Yeah. You really like, I, I, I maybe not as necessarily obsessed about teaching anymore as I used to be, mm -hmm. but I do love the fact that whatever I'm able to help to produce, cause it's all a team effort. Um, whatever classes we release, though, if, if they can be successful, if they are successful, then I know we made good work. Right. If they aren't successful, then why am I doing this in the first place? Right. I, I would never want to do that. <clears throat> so we have that obsession about quality because of it. Yeah. But then on the other hand, it's like, okay, well, in order to do that, we have to pay bills as well. Right. And it, it, like, it could be philanthropy fine. But then it means like uh, when I'm doing that, I'm not spending time with my family instead. Right? right. And you know it as well. Like business is just eating your time. Oh, yeah. Holy. And it's never ending. It's like I don't have vacations from Learn Squared ever. Yeah, no. It's ever. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if, if the phone call from my partner comes in, I have to pick it up no matter what I'm doing. You know, that's that's sort of like the assumption we have. Yeah. Um, so. So you have to, you have to do it. So it's profitable as well, well because you want to hire people, you want to have them working for you and they have to be compensated for their work as well in like a fair way. So it's like, yeah, it's this constant in between. The one thing I was going to say is, um, I think before I got into, you know, getting into, you know, building a school at James Paik and Thomas, um, which was, you know, you, you, we're, we're, we're an artist first, right? So your yeah. brain is just thinking about creativity, thinking about being a better painter or designer. Um, but it's, it's one muscle. And, and it, it wasn't until I started understanding the business model and that mindset, it was, it's a different muscle, you know? Yeah. And I know like those are, it, it can feel very conflicting at times because your business brain is telling you one thing, but your creative brain is telling you another. Mm -hmm. that's helped me to organize, you know, how to manage both sectors because both are equally important and both are equally yeah. interesting too, because <clears throat> there's a lot of things that, you know, we do as artists that can inform how we run a business, 
and vice versa. There's a lot of things that we that we do in a business format that can affect the creative output or that can affect the art, right? Yeah. And so it's good to understand and have those respected categories separate, but still give full attention and not 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 neglect either one of those. And so I've I've come to appreciate business from that standpoint, whether it's finance or organization or marketing, um, communication, you know, logistics, overhead, and then yeah. looking at it from the art point of view, like what does that all mean? Well, it means like you know, getting really uh, uh, your passionate instructors, making sure your curriculum is well designed, making sure that the materials is really good, making sure that this is relevant, um, that it's up to date, um, that yeah. it's appealing, you know? And so it, 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 it all kind of informs one another. And, uh, you know, I, I, I honestly wish that I, I can kind of go back in time and tell the 18 year old self, be like, Hey, you can still be an artist but have an open mind about these other avenues of, of, of where, where it can help, you know, um, your livelihood, you know, like this yeah. can help communication, marketing, all that stuff. It's, these are all just tools that can help you become a better performer and that's all it is. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so important now when everything is kind of changing too, with, you know, art becoming slowly a commodity, whether we like it or not. Yeah. Um, it is becoming commoditized because it's just so open now that a lot of people can jump in and, and make something out of it. Yeah. Like you have to pay attention to things like business and marketing because you can get flooded with everything else. And you're just like, no matter how good you are, it's going to be that much more difficult to stand out and, and be successful with it. Like we all know that one artist that is just like, I cannot believe you're not killing right now <laughs> oh oh that's why because you have no social media presence almost at all right right um yeah it's 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 very it's a good learning process yeah it's i mean i have a lot of friends who aren't like social you know they're not on instagram and art station and facebook you know and it's it's kind of daunting for them because it's not that it's it's necessarily hard, but it's it's a very unknown territory, you know? Right. How do you even get into it? And they're asking me, they're like, oh my God, you got like thousands of followers. But I'm like, it's it's that's not how it started though. It just started with one post and just yeah. communicating and then just building that momentum and just really using it as an av avenue of, of connecting with your fans or connecting with other artists. And that's all it really is. But it has to start somewhere. Yeah. And it just has to start just like if you're learning 3d or a new program. Like I remember I was just fearful of, of, of learning any 3d. I'm like, I can't, I can't do it. But it's like, no, shut up. Just open up the program and just build a box, you know? Yeah. Model a box and then now turn that box into a pyramid or turn it into a building. And then you just kind of build that muscle you kind of, you kind of get used to the repetition and, I feel like that's the same thing with social media or marketing or anything, you know, you kind of want to take in incremental steps. Yeah. And so, yeah. Yeah. Like everything, right. <clears throat> Where it's, it's downing at the very start. It's just so many things you could do. Where do you start? Like, right. what do you do? You know? Right. Right. It goes with business and social media and all of those and marketing. Like, What's marketing like? Uh, remember that time, like when, because you 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 started in when you started your your career, you were in video games or film. I was predominantly video, video games. Yeah. Predominantly video games, right? Because yeah. yeah. So when you were working as an art concept artist early on in video games, you remember when when you would talk with friends about marketing? It's like, oh, what are, those assholes are not doing really much, you know? <laughs> Yeah. It, know. What are they actually doing? Like, yeah, I, I don't, I don't see results, you know, you know, it was always be that condescending thing. It's like, ah, yeah. You know, well, so, so back then, you know, it's it just like using Blogspot, right? Yeah. That's all, yeah, yeah. that's all I remember. And it was just, you're connecting with people then. Um, but one person that taught me about marketing and it was, it was more about brand identity was, was my, was my business partner, James Pick. Yeah. And he talked about it more in the sense of, not necessarily in a business sense, but in more in, ter in terms of uh, just brand, you as an artist, right. how do people recognize yeah. you? And he said to me, he was like, when you hear my name or you think about me, what's the first thing you think about? And I'm just like, fuck environments, boom, done. 
he was like, exactly. He's like, because you know me for something, I've now become, I've, I have this, this uh, identity about my name and my work. And so yeah. it's easy for me to quote unquote market, you know, to get out in front of studios. And he told me that at a, at, at, during my, during my time at art center, he says, what is your brand identity? You know? So he kind of changed that definition for me. And he says, instead of trying to be like everyone else, what's that one thing that's going to make you stand out? And that's when I just kind of started off my career as being kind of the guy who draws these silly, silly robots. And I was the mech guy for a little bit. Yeah, you were. Yeah, dude. you were. And I'm, I didn't even that's draw. So true. I didn't even draw. My <laughs> mechs weren't even that good, to be honest, man. They're they're kind of like clunky little robots with like skinny skinny legs. But that's because that's all I did. People were able to kind of pick me out from the crowd and be like, "Oh yeah, John, he's the guy that does the, the mech little guy. robots, the mech guy." He's one of like, parks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's like the one trick pony, you know, and, and that was it. That was me. And, but because of that, I think, um, it was, it was easy to pull me out from the masses, you know, like, so when I yeah. apply, people were like, they, they remember, they were like, Oh, he's the guy that just does the robots. Now it seems kind of counterintuitive or, or counterproductive where if you're applying for a job, they might think, well, who's going to hire you just for robots? But the thing is, is that they're going to, they're going to remember me, you know, and be yeah. they were able to remember me. They're able to refer me to all these other studios and jobs that actually needed, you know, the robot guy, <laughs> robots or vehicles or anything that had yeah. gears or hinges. Right. Yeah. Ash talks about it as the only a space. Um, I've, I've, sorry, I think yeah. I might yeah. have interrupted you because you cut out for a second. So I was like, oh, you no, didn't no, finish. No. Um, right. No, I agree with you 100%. And, um, you know, Ash, Ash, Ash said it's like owning space. And I, I agree with, with that sentiment 100%. Like the moment you you can associate your name with a very specific thing that people recognize you for. And when they say that one thing, they actually remember your name associated with it. Yep. It's, it's like what Starbucks did with coffee, right? Yeah. It's like, star, like you think coffee, your first, one of the first thing that comes to your mind is Starbucks. Yep. And it's, it's it, it could, it, there's nothing that that's better than marketing like that, where you associate a brand name with a, a simple word, you know, yeah. when yeah. we talk about mechs, uh, like robots, ro like robot design, hard surface design, your first, who is the first person that comes to your mind? Oh man, for me, it's Darren Quatch, you know, Darren Quatch or, okay. or Fausto Di Martini, you know, to me it's Vitali. But Fausto and, and Darren are, are great as well. So there's like a bunch of names that, that are there, right? Yeah. When you, when you, when you talk about like um, daily um, designs or something like that, the first name that's going to come out is Beeple, like right away. Yeah, yeah. Right? Absolutely. And there is so many Beeple copies out there. Yeah. Right? But Beeple is Beeple. the first. Yeah. Everyone knows, oh, the daily stuff, the Beeple. <laughs> <laughs> So there's, I mean, there are not as grand associations as Starbucks and coffee, but that's exactly the, the type of marketing you are talking about. And yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. It's so important. And it's, yeah, almost, because, it's one of those yeah. things where like, you know, Vitali Fausto or, or Darren Quach and people like, yeah, they're good. They're known for that thing, but they can do so many other things, you know? Yeah. But yeah. it, it's that it's that initial point of contact that that thing that comes to your mind because if you go to like let's say you go to Starbucks right you're like yeah I'm gonna grab some coffee what else do you get tea a muffin yeah maybe some I don't know like like some mints or I don't know whatever you're you're picking up other things but you are there and they 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 were able to attract you and that's what's that's what's kind of the the, the genius behind that is, yeah is is you're creating this this memorable brand about you as an artist you know yeah i think what starbucks did really well is also associate like gig economy with 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 them as well yeah because you see so many people sitting there with laptops and doing whether they are doing work or writing scripts especially okay. in la <laughs> totally. yeah it's it's it seems like funny on the on the glance on the first glance but but you think about it, it's like oh well that's like really good marketing as well because they, they are making an impression that they're always busy, right? Like the place is always busy, meaning like 
there is always something going on. Yeah. It's not like a dead space where no one's ever there. Yeah. Um, they try to like that for, for, I mean, I'm pretty sure like more rural area are not rural areas are not as occupied normally, yeah. but you always, like, you can associate, okay. Like the more people are in that place, that means the coffee is good, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So like the, the association, I think that with brands specifically, when you think about it, the more, the more a brand, the, the longer the brand exists, usually the more respect it gets over time as well. Right. And it really helps to, you know, with the marketing. Um, and I, well, that's where the social media comes in as well. Like if you can grow your popularity on the social media and become more and more sort of mainstream in terms of like people recognizing you mm -hmm. through the platform. That also means that you more people you don't have to be the the greatest person to do the job, but because people recognize you, it's more likely you're gonna get it too, um, right. which I feel is very true. You know, yeah, we all seen you, you've seen those channels yeah. on YouTube, right? There's like certain channels on YouTube that are art related, uh, you know, drawing channels, and you look at yeah. the kind of work that is being presented. It's like, oh, that's what my students done when they were five. Right. <laughs> you know, um, but th those channels have like millions of followers. Right. Oh, yeah. And you and you ask like, how did what? What? I know like hundreds of people that are better than that, but yeah. they're missing one thing, one thing only. They never done a channel and they haven't done yeah. it for 10 years and they've yeah. never put like energy into making the personality of, yeah. of that to be great as well. You know? Yeah. And that's what we're, we're a person that might not be the greatest artist in eyes of all the other artists. Let's put it this way. Yeah. Like, all the artists was like, ah, that's, he's okay. You know, but public was like, he's awesome because yeah. for public, he's like, he is the first person that they see and associate that specific craft with them specifically. It's kind of like, you know, Bob Ross, right? Yeah. He's just a fan favorite. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not for like, super professional artists they look kind of look at nope. it as a joke but for the rest of the world he is the best you know yep. because he makes it look so easy and he makes it look fun you know and yeah it's like he has a, like ridiculous memes about him slapping his brush but i mean it's 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 like you kind of become a personality and i i, I see that with like even um even one of my friends ross tran like fucking badass right yeah um really talented guy but what he created is kind of this this hub where if you are just if you're into anime drawing anime characters and pretty girls and stuff like that you're gonna go look at ross's stuff because one yeah. he makes it look really good he's very he has a very good fun you know and, and for just yeah. a someone who does art for, as a hobby that's gonna be your jam you know what i mean and so yeah. he's created that brand that kind of demand and it's just it's it just works really well you know yeah he owns that space <laughs> he really does and, and Arid, he is, Arid, he is. Arid, Arid, Arid right here yeah. yeah yeah i agree i agree it's, it just gives you gives you uh, an insight into how important it is to i mean it's not for everyone and sometimes sometimes someone will say like oh that's not for me right um but you know like to me it's one of those things and i i would i would be curious to hear your thoughts on this it's might as well do it, you know, uh, and ba like, we don't know what's going to happen. What, what's, the, what's the environment going to be like in 10 years from now. Right. And I'm not talking about the, the, the pandemic thing at all. At Just, yeah. Just, yeah. But the pandemic itself becomes like the catalyst to that basically speeds up some of the processes that we kind of like were expecting. Yeah. But and also bringing some of the, some of the unexpected results that we need, like most of us knew know that well maybe not most of us but a lot of us know that okay there's there's definitely something that's going to change in the future I don't know what that's going to be so maybe it's not the safest bet to take everything that we have now for granted right 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 so w what is your what is your perspective in lieu of that when it comes to like marketing yourself using social media and like running your own businesses or the, the kind of path you're taking as an artist, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta put it all on the table. You know, you have yeah. to use every single method possible. Um, because again, the, and the world is changing so fast. 
um, you got to be hyper proactive, you know, get your stuff out there. You know, if, if, if you're willing to be in front of a camera and you're willing to do social media, great, do that. Um, but at least use Instagram as a, as a platform to, you know, just have your work. Yeah. One, you know, because people rarely go to websites anymore, you know, yeah. like a lot of, a lot of. I get a lot of contacts just through Facebook and Instagram. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> Maybe because uh, so, we're, we're on our phones every single day. You know what I mean? And so production designers are on the phones. Art directors are on their phones. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know how many art directors and production designers know how to navigate ArtStation, you know, but I can tell you they use Instagram themselves. You know, they sh yeah. I'm sure they use Facebook. And so to just be proactive in those spaces are great. If you can no. leverage and go on to YouTube, fantastic. Do that. You don't even share your work on YouTube. You don't have to be a personality, just but just be like, hey, here's an update. This is kind of what I'm working on, and just share your thoughts. It can it can be a it can be a visual diary or or like or kind of like a communication tool in that instance. You know, you don't yeah. have to do like you know funny videos, um, but it can it can be that because I think to your point, you know, we are gonna go more you know, work from home, you know, it's, yeah. it's going to be more of a virtual space. Like that's just kind of how it's ending up. And so, um, I think, I think, you know, leverage the time now, leverage all the platforms now to, to kind of help you set up for that, you know? Yeah. Um, so those are my could actual I, thoughts, man. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. You have to put everything on the table. I think that the idea of taking things for granted is bad. Yeah. Um, always looking ahead of time and not the being dismissal about things. I, I feel like I haven't paid attention much to, to uh, TikTok, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it's one of those things like, oh, do I really need to do this? Uh, and, and maybe not. Maybe not everything is for everyone. Right, if, but at if, least if, if you're like... If you do one, I'll do one, dude. <laughs> I already did one. Are you serious? Shit. Oh, yeah. I got to do one then. I Fuck. Did one. <laughs> Damn it. I did only one. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, I got to look it up. I made it funny. Uh, it's, it's the same handle I have on all my social media, by the way. Okay. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I haven't paid attention much. So maybe there's already people that really got to own that space in terms of artists. But I feel like if, if, if you're an artist and you can figure out a format, like play with the, with the platform that's, that's there. And then if you yeah. are able to figure out how to use that platform to leverage whatever you, f you, f you feel you, you can leverage with your work yeah. that will attract people to actually buy from you or m make you so that m whatever that is that you can monetize basically based of that, yeah. you well, it, are it, going to destroy. It makes you more visible. You know, I, let's just put right. it that way. I, I don't want to necessarily the base tie, level. tie money yeah. into it all the time. Cause you know, some people who are just more like, how do I get, how do I get my work in front of people? And, and and honestly, I, I was I was talking. That's about tying money. Don't you? Sorry, I'm interrupting you here. Uh, but that that's tying money to this, right? Because like, if you want to be more visible and get more work because of be more visibility, I mean, that's that's a monetary incentive. Yes, yes. Actually, you're right. In in that sense, yeah. you're absolutely right. You know. Um, so like, I, I I kind of I told my students this, you know, because. I said, like, you know, go ahead and do um, the, the the emails, you know, go ahead and, you know, print out the brochures. But the people that do that, it speaks to a certain demographic that tend, tend to lean more older because that right. was during their time, their prime, that was their form of communication and connecting, you know? Yeah. I think with our generation, like you and me, it's going to be YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, you know? websites, stuff like that. The newer generation, it is TikTok. It is going to be these other formats and platforms. You know, that's kind of the way they're communicating. And so I think, mm -hmm. I think if you're someone who wants to reach all different facets and all different types of demographic and age, then you're going to want to try to attack it from all points of views, you know? Um, and so, yes, yes. To your point, like, you know, if you want to, if you want to get that exposure for monetary reasons or for, um, for building your business or to just land a job or an internship opportunity, you know, put everything on the table, like do everything that you need to, 
um, to, to, to get, to become more visible, you know? Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about this, this whole thing was like, Oh, you're, com you're trying to be commercial at every single point. <laughs> like isn't art about the artistry of things? Like how would you react to that? Because it, it ties to exactly what we're talking about. I mean, there could be an argument to say like, okay, you're trying to monetize uh, one way or another, everything you do. But I mean, like, if you think about it, right, unless you're doing, uh, being a fan, uh, not fine artist, a fine artist, mm -hmm. I mean, even the fine artist, like you're trying to monetize, uh, in yeah. a way you're selling your paintings, right? Yeah. And you know, for instance, like I, I've said this about, well, there's, podcasts. there's kind of like the whole, uh, yeah, go ahead. What's, what's that? No, sorry. Go ahead. Um, it's just yeah, I was going to say like, I was going to say like, um, you know, uh, kind of that, that idea of being like, you're, you're, you're kind of selling out or, or whatever, whatever that term means. Um, I just think like, you have to know, like if you're, if you're a commercial artist, you know, you have to do whatever it takes to be marketable and be actually useful to these productions. Right. Yeah. Um, but if you're a fine artist and you, and you have your own voice, yeah, like I would say continue on that trajectory, you know, continue to build your own style, build your own, your own unique, uh, visual language. Um, but you know, I would not disregard, you know, online platforms to help, you know, with yeah. reach, you know? Um, so I, I kind of, I'll kind of, I'll look at it from that standpoint. Um, you know, cause I've had, I've had students who, 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 who ask me things like, you know, Oh man, I, I really want, I, do I need to learn blender and do I need to learn, you know, kind of more photorealistic rendering. And I said, listen, you don't have to do it if you're doing it for your own art, but if you want to go to these certain studios, those are going to be the base requirements, you know? Yeah. If you're going to work at Naughty Dog or Call of Duty, you know, the games typically lend itself to be more photorealistic. So the work itself, the production work itself has to match the final product. Right. And yeah. I think, I think it's, it's, it's knowing how to outfit things in order to kind of make sure that your work can be used or can actually be applied to those, to those products and studios. Um, so I, I, I look at it, I really look at it from that standpoint. Yeah. I just had a funny observation when you said Naughty Dog and Call of Duty. Mm -hmm. It's like you've named two brands, one it's a company and one it's a product. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Like, Naughty Dog. Oh, but uh, you know, Overwatch. But yeah, like, like Activision in, in general, I guess. Yeah. Or Blizzard, yeah, Activision. I just wanted the same right now. Um, yeah, it's kind of funny because, uh, <laughs> like, you think Naughty Dog, okay, they made quite a few really good games. Call of Duty, I know, oh, right? there's a, quite a few companies that did that game. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Correction. Uh, no, it's it's yeah. it's just like oh wow, like we were just talking about brand and data uh, identity. It's just like a perfectly sliding example you know <laughs> totally of why it why it matters yeah um yeah i agree man I, it's <laughs> like you have to all all hands on deck uh yeah. whether you like it or not it's gonna be work uh I, I i i used to say you have to treat it as business and okay give me, so, so don't, people don't get me wrong the, the reason i'm saying this is because when you are thinking about work and business you're taking it very seriously yeah and that's what I'm, that's what I mean. Uh, if you're, if you're trying to do things just for monetary reasons only, uh, y you might be successful with doing that, but you're not, you might not be happy with the kind of choices you're making at the end, because you know, if, 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 if you're only doing art, the kind of art that only sells and you're not touching the stuff that doesn't sell, uh, what's the, what's the, what's the likelihood of, you know, that you're going to like everything you do at that point, you know? Right. Oh, I have this idea for a new IP that tells a story about this character, but no one's going to like it. So I'm not going to do it. Right. You know, you're kind of killing your own ideas, uh, which is kind of sad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and you, you know, like so the, the, to that point though, like how many, there's so many, I mean, everything we know in terms of the popular art or popular entertainment comes from someone else's idea that was oh, a person that was like fuck no i'm gonna i'm gonna give it a try 
this is the idea I have, let's build upon it. And then it became popular, you know, so you might be missing that opportunity. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I definitely think, you know, like for you're creating Showtime, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, while you are working as a commercial designer, you're building your IP on the side. Yeah, more or less. So coming up with ideas. I think that needs, to, yeah, that needs to happen. You know, I think, I think, you know, it, it's it's always going to be that balance. Whether you're you're building, you know, one of my one of my good friends, Ben Morrow, he's building um, Huxley, and yep. you know, he needed to work as a full time designer while writing his own book. And so, um, I think I think it's it's always going to be that balance. Um, Uh, I guess the financial cushion to just be like, fuck it. I'm going to just do my own thing for the next two to three years to build my own IP. Great. You know, yeah. um, working and you have that urge to build your own IP. I would say do it, you know, do it while you're working, you know, take stabs at it here and there, you know, nights and weekends, yeah. um, you know, need that creative, that. So, yeah, you've been breaking up a little bit, but I think the gist of the message came through. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I'm having like a little bit of a connection problem here. Um, yeah, I've noticed like the the sound levels are dropping every now and then. Um, yeah, like just I noticed it's yeah. like cutting in. Yeah, it's cutting in and out. Yeah, uh, I I think you know I mean dude we've been we we've planned for like an hour and a half we actually did two hours <laughs> believe it or not. Awesome. Um, I think we covered enough grounds for now um to like wrap the conversation here because 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 we were talking about you know kind of like the goals that you could take and all hands of, on deck i think that's a really positive um sort of like call to action yeah for for everyone to take upon um i'm, I'm pretty sure there's other topics to discuss but I mean, now, since we're all home, hey, who knows? Maybe we're going to do another one very soon. <laughs> let's, let's do it. Honestly, like, we, we have to take advantage of this time. Let, let's, yeah. man, let's just let's just set up a schedule for another one and... Uh, we'll do. You know? We'll do. <laughs> so, anyone who's listening, uh, thanks so much for, for being here and listening to the whole show. Uh, I usually say that at the end because I know a lot of people like to listen and then, like, stop and then eventually go back to it. So... But um, yeah, any any of you who enjoy the show so far, obviously the, the best thing you can do to support it is by subscribing, pressing a like and giving a comment. That's just how the algorithms work. <laughs> <laughs> that that, visit, that that just increased the visibility of the podcast. Uh, of course, this podcast is also available on all, all the other platforms such as, you know, SoundCloud, iTunes, uh, Spotify. Uh, there's a bunch of more Stitcher, I think, Google Play. If you want to check out that, go to artcafe.tv. All of the links to those platforms are linked uh, on the main site. You could do that. And John, thanks a lot for 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 joining me on this. Yeah, man, really appreciate it. Really, uh, thank you for having me. No, it's been fun. It's been uh, you're always like the good spirit to talk, and we're friends, and you know we always have like a cool conversation. Yeah. So. Um, so it's always good. Uh, cool. Thanks, guys. Uh, Till the next time. Big kisses and take care. <laughs> All right, man. Thank you so much. Stay safe. <laughs>